Welcome to another session of Adventure and Action in the Indian subcontinent. The idea behind this is on World Tourism Day is to not only as an area for cultural immersions, but also several other small interests and identities, which are largely not marketed in the right sense. But in our explorations around the subcontinent, we've come across several leaders in both action and adventure areas. And we believe that these are stories worth being told. And in a post-COVID travel world, some of these ideas could really, really be useful as uh, programs for all of you to provide promote and market both from a traveler's perspective as well as from the perspective of a tour operator. Uh, today we have with us Siddharth Singh of the House of Rohit. Rohit Gard actually came into the hospitality industry 30 years ago and the third generation of the family is now involved in the hospitality products and they have three lovely properties which is uh, Rohit Gard, Mihir Gard and the Rohit House. To put the perspective of riding safaris in India primarily as a passionate endeavor by Siddharth he probably must have been one of the first people to put this out in the world and his perspective to how he would be promoting riding in India 23 years later is something worth listening to. On the other hand we have Saurav that he's traveled very well in South Asia having worked with filmmakers and photography trips. His insight into the world of travel is great. He started Bijapur Harsh Safaris in 2017. A very unique endeavor where Saurav is concerned because for us at Rare it brought the idea of riding as a possible experience to be promoted globally. So let's quickly dive in. Is India looked up as an important destination where riding is concerned? Serious riders even consider this as a part of their bucket list? We did have a very fine equine tradition. Sadly, we lost that. And I don't know, when the British left the shores of our country, they took along with a lot of other stuff. They took the equestrian tradition with them and they kind of seem to have hijacked it. So no, we are not known as a riding destination, but we are and we need to tell the world that we are. So slowly, yes, people are now, they're getting familiar with our indigenous breed of horses. The Marwari has been exposed a little bit internationally. Sadly, nobody knows about our breeds. When people talk about horse breeds of the world, uh, Indian breeds don't feature. It's only very recently that they've started to feature now. And it compares with the best in the world. You know, the Marwari that stands today in the country can be compared to any of the top breeds of the world. It is one of the old breeds of the world. DNA tests have thrown light on that fact. The Western world likes to believe that horses came to India from somewhere else. And our most ancient of texts mention the horse. And actually new research that some scholars have been doing on, on equines, they have found evidence of a horse type. Uh, and they call it the Shivalinyasis. And this is a horse type, a prehistoric horse, which is very different from the other prehistoric horses that we are shown in depictions of sketches and drawings and cave paintings and things that looks more like a donkey or a mule than a horse. This particular depiction is more like the sport horse. It looks like the modern sport horse. Now, that completely reverses the old theory where people said the horses came from the Northwest. It's called the Shivalinyasis because they found evidence of this horse under the Shivalik ranges, which is basically the Gangetic Plain, which is a fertile area. And so, horse has actually migrated Northwest from India into Central Asia and parts of Eastern Europe. And this horse certainly looks very much like our Marwari. Now, I am committed to the Marwadi breed. For the last two decades, I have all Marwadis in my stable. Horses are my passion. The riding that I offer to my guests is just an extension of my passion. And that's because I ride every day and I want my guests to experience the Marwari for themselves. We've had a fabulous equestrian tradition, and especially from the part of India that I come from, Marwad. I mean, right till World War I, Jodhpur Lancers, they took Haifa on horseback and they took Haifa against machine gun fire. They charged the guns and they took the city from the Ottomans and the Germans and uh, liberated the city. The Baha'i faith lives today because of the Lancers. And the Maharaj of Jodhpur was invited to Israel, to Haifa, two years ago. And the Baha'i people were celebrating their centenary. He was honored there by the Baha'i people. He says, it's because of you that we are still alive. Because that very day when the charge happened, the head of the Baha'i people, the Prophet, he was going to be executed that evening. But fate turned on its head and uh, he lived. And the Baha'i faith lived. The world needs to know about 
the equestrian tradition of of Rajasthan especially and of India sadly even in the Marwadi world 95% of the owners of the Marwadi don't ride they can pay top dollar for the Marwadi horse today they are fetching huge prices in the market but they are show animals bought out in the ring and taken back they look very beautiful talking about the Marwadi under saddle it is a divine experience it is beautiful to ride the Marwadi is a one man horse and that's why i am very very skeptical about giving my own personal horses to my guests to ride simply because it's extremely intelligent and sensitive it bonds with you fabulously now that's another thing i want to talk about our old tradition of horsemanship and equestrian was that we encourage the bonding between horse and master and in the traditional cavalries of mewar and marwar and other states the horse and rider were left they were allotted for life so if you read our history all our heroes from manana pratap to amar singh rathore to durga das their horses are as famous and because the horses ended up doing extraordinary deeds on the battlefield simply because of that bond otherwise it, it wouldn't do it because of that bond of the master wanted him to jump off the walls of a fort in agra he did it i mean all these things happened just because of that bond so the marwadi bonds beautifully but if you give him away to different people he's fried very quickly too so that's the flip side in my experience of dealing with marwadis i've had a horse completely flip his head in half an hour of bike riding and 6 months of work on that horse has just gone down the drain riding the marwadi if you are able to be in sync with him it's the most beautiful experience because it becomes like telepathy they are much more sensitive than meets the eye so the body language are transferred to the horse transferred to the horse yeah and, and the horse is able to recognize that much quicker than any man can so it, it's a different language you speak with him you have to learn the language and it's a horse with beautiful smooth gaits very comfortable it has a great burst of speed it was a cavalry horse so it has that burst of speed it also is a desert breed so very hardy and it has this endurance ability So the Marwadi in India has already done very well in the long distance in the endurance races. Marwadis have won the nationals in 100 kilometers and 80 kilometers. And if trained in the proper manner like they do in the UAE with the Arabs, uh, the Marwadi can do very well. It's like the Arab it's a desert breed. These are two breeds that could be termed as hot blooded. So you have the warm blood of Europe and the US which is the sport horse. This is a hot blooded animal. So from a hot climate and very full of fire and very very sensitive so it's a it's a handle with care horse but if you handle it correctly it gives you much more back so that's the marwari for you so there is potential to be promoting riding programs there is talking huge, there is huge, plenty, there's huge, huge potential do you think we should be doing sort of coming to you you started off in 2017 do you agree that riding in india equestrian programs in india still need to be promoted in a very sensitive and a very efficient way do you feel the same uh, shobha one of the reasons why we decided as four or five partners one with the horses one with the vehicles one with the catering and the staff and the back end and one who's planning the rides and leading the ride it's a company called wild frontiers actually that was that had asked us to put a ride together through jhalor going towards chanod i was asked to photograph it i asked them to recce first with me so that i could identify the landscape and where the positions were to photograph and film and then we would uh, make that as the stops for the horses during the course of those days i realized that it's a really special landscape it has wildlife it has a great ruhi jungle it has beautiful desert animals flora and fauna both i saw pangolin asiatic wild cat porcupine hedgehog and during the course of those 15 days i pretty much knocked off the entire checklist for wildlife and plants for this area i realized that the reason why in the past i had never had such a good experience was because we were always in a vehicle and the pace at which you were interacting with the landscape was too fast you weren't connected enough to the actual land you were on because of the speed at which you were traveling that led me to think that if i can create a product that connects several hoteliers or several landscapes using horses or cycles or people walking just slow the speed down then the experience would be far more interesting because then we can have a lot more for them to see 
so to take that forward we then decided let us not become the actual travel agent or the hotel let's become a service provider that connects the two entities for their business and we give the guests a really interesting experience to get from your vehicle to your property and from your property to the next property is a journey and that is what you are signing up for you're not signing up to for instance have a swim at mihirgarh you're signing up to ride siddharth ji's stallion and a mare from rohitgarh to mihirgarh and it's the journey that what we decided was more important the reason why we chose equestrian versus all other modes is that it weeds out a lot of the riffraff so our guest level has to come up the moment we are asking and expecting an equestrian audience to come to us we expect them to be good riders as siddharth was saying we expect them to be experienced in being outdoors for long periods of time we expect them to be physically fit to be able to engage in this manner of tourism and it's a great experience what you see from horseback and the way animals interact with you on horseback the way wildlife and livestock interact with you when you're on horseback is a very different experience to a cycle or a motorcycle or even pedestrian and that is to do with the way wildlife and domestic or feral animals perceive horses with a rider on top it's the profile if they perceive it as another animal they don't perceive it as a human being coming at and how did the market respond to this i mean the people you spoke to how did they respond to the whole idea of an equestrian experience through the landscape that they for a long time they've been riding through it I mean, they've uh, been I mean, driving, driving through, through it, it driving in Innova, yeah. in an Innova air condition with your mini bar and your basket, mm. and mm. it's a luxury experience getting A to B. But what we are trying to ask them to do is to create the A to B into the experience. So it is the journey actually that we want to make you have a value addition. The response was, I th- I think, very positive, uh, considering our as. that when i was saying the horse market is not very well developed in the travel trade there are very few players they hold most of the market and they run their businesses with several rides at middle to low cost on a triangular like flying schools do which is three airports and you just do one two three and that's it you never leave that triangle and so the horse safaris have been pretty much that business model we decided that we wouldn't do 1 2 3 we would say okay let's do udaipur to jodhpur let's do jodhpur to chanod let's do itawa to pratapgarh via the chambal up to bateshwar let's research doing srinagar to dachigam and then around dachigam and end of ride out there Let's think about riding the Zanskar the new road from Padam down to Zangla and raft them out at the end of it. It's very tailor made. It needs a lot of research, but it means that we can provide you a journey that we as operators are interested in executing. And I guess as a guest we inspire you to dream of what you might love. One uh, thing we we should talk about here is the terrain what sarum was saying you know the jalor terrain and it is really fabulous that's the first thought that comes to mind oh what fantastic riding country you know mm-hmm. that's what you say and so we are yeah we are blessed that way that the terrain is very friendly to horses what happens in in say mewar which is a uh, plateau land and it's very hilly and rocky is that you don't get enough open tracks and spaces to put the horse through its spaces secondly they're quite hard on the feet the horse especially when you're tra- traveling long distance preferably you need even good ground uh, rocky cobbly terrain is heavy on the feet so horses tend to get injured so that is why even though that area is very picturesque for example the ride to kumbhalgarh now i have to say that the first man to introduce horseback safaris to indian tourism was uh, shri ji mewar and this was in 1981 I was in school then and he organized the first horseback safari starting from Kelwada which is 7 10 kilometers from Kumbhalgarh we rode up to Kumbhalgarh there was not a single hotel there at that time we rode up to Kumbhalgarh we camped the night at the fort and it was heavenly and then next morning we rode down from Kumbhalgarh fort all the way down to Ghanera 
it was the most beautiful ride i've ever done on that kacha track and it had rain it was the month of may but it was pleasant it had rain the forest had turned green it was spectacular and that stuck with me and then finally 10 years later when we opened roit the first thing i did was you know get horses and provide this activity and experience the terrain for the rohit equestrian programs are largely around uh, i mean we were talking about uh, so uh, the, i i yeah. like to do it i like to do it around my area so i have full control on my ride no matter where they are and yeah. service them to the best possible even my lunches and picnics and whatever we do we we do it with a certain standard and we are able to do that because of the proximity geographical proximity i mean if i had to go 60 kilometers out and organize or 80 kilometers out and organize a lunch and cater to that it would be difficult but uh, in this area within a radius of 20 30 kilometers it's very doable so, so the rohit stables uh, caters to day rides to day rides is going up to 3 4 days 5 days rides we've had yes, guests yes. who've ridden 5 days 4 days it's very good because you know for the longer rides we also have another heritage property called fort chanwa that we include Uh, yeah. which is rideable distance so we take that in the loop as well so that becomes an additional night and the terrain is the same for the 6 day ride we do a fly camp which we pitch and unpitch a lot of mehirgarh guests don't like to move out of mehirgarh they like to do day rides from mehirgarh they ride out into different directions have we organize their lunch either in a property or a nice picnic and they ride for me the the whole experience is very horse centric Yes. It's about the horse experience. So which means between Rohit Guard, Mihir Guard and the camp you are able to do day rides. All these are one day rides. So when you start from yes. Rohit go up to Mihir Guard we do it in a day. We do a picnic okay. lunch on the on route. We visit villages on route. We are able to see wildlife on route and we reach there by sunset. And when you do the 6 day ride you would be heading out to Luni and no. you would yeah, be stopping there. Yeah. Then, then coming to our camp and then from the camp we go off on a tangent little further up there's a lovely spot by a lake where we normally pitch up where you can pitch a camp yeah okay and then right back to mehirgarh we normally end our rides at mehirgarh is it correct to say that the rohit equestrian program is largely centered around the house of rohit properties, properties? Yes. Yeah? yes okay yes. okay so which is uh, from day rides to up to 5 to 6 yes. day rides yes so it's all very flexible we tailor make the program according to the riding ability of our guests now if the guests is honest enough to tell us that he has very little experience but he still wants to get on a horse and experience the countryside from horseback then we do a gentle half day ride or a, a morning or an evening ride with them if the guest has experience um, then we are able to do the full day ride with them and again how much experience how good they are and comfortable they are on horseback a lot of people overestimate their abilities to ride just for their own safety we have to mm-hmm. be very blunt and frank with our judgment and if the rider is not good and he's not in sync and if you're going to do a long ride with him more than the rider it's your horse that feels the brunt of it but yeah because yeah. bad riding will give him a sore back bad riding will give him a sore mouth and we have very high value horses my horses are tops yeah. so i i cannot afford that so i be very very careful about that just another question about these day rides so uh, when people come in they obviously are not equ- if they're going to do a half day ride or something they're not going to come equipped with the uh, gear right so, uh, so you provide the basic, the basic gear we provide we provide helmets and we provide chaps so those can be worn even on sneakers and you're you're good enough to go is the safaris promoted with stays at the house of rohit properties or staying at house of Ro- uh, properties you can also do the safaris of course staying at house of rohit properties you were able to do the equestrian program but but now we've made a name for ourselves for the equestrian program It so we is. do have guests coming to us because of the horses so it works both ways but yes. as i said it's a very niche market it's a niche no? so the numbers that come just they come to us just for the horses is small in comparison but yes we have made a name for ourselves as being equestrian hotels hotels that have quality equine flesh and i i can boast about my stable i do have some of the best marwaris in the countries sort of the programs that you run the whole program that you run for 6 to 7 days i know you know the whole itinerary that is curated around the uh, bijapur horse safari programs we run two two sort of structures of itineraries one structure is for a smaller group who are slightly higher paying and the other structure is for a slightly larger group that can pay 
middle of the market prices as far as we're concerned to break even cost. Let's take the high-end product first because that's the dream product that we provide. In that, you would need about six to eight riders as a minimum carrying capacity. And in that product, you would be traveling from one property to a camp with a lunch spot in between that was pre-decided by us or from a camp to another property and so on and so forth for up to nine days. What kind of distances do you cover in a day? Roughly, 30 kilometers is the top number. So, always within that amount. Okay, that's good. 22 to 30, it depends on the day and the section. If we feel the riders are strong enough, and the terrain in front of us allows us, then we'll do the 30 with a lot of reval and a little bit of canter. And if we're only doing a 20, then it will be a salt flat in there where we can give you a gallop or rest for lunch and then do a short trotting ride on to your next destination. We're going through, in some senses, a new area almost every day. So as a team for the back-end logistics, we need a drone to be with us close to the horses that can go ahead of the horses to assess if there's a herd of Neil guy that we might want to sneak up to or if there's some black buck or anything interesting you know further ahead I think we can report to the ride leader that if you slow down and you take this route then you'll engage with this particular animal so we can do that uh, during the course of the ride and it really helps the guest experience a lot as for the big itineraries that are highly paid, of course, we provide everything we can under the sun. We try and grow responsible food during the year. Uh, so we try and serve all of our own produce as much as possible. We try and cook at the locations, but not actually at the camp where you'll have the lunch. We cook close by and bring the food to that point um, so that it's hot and served ready to eat so it's not been you know stored for any period of time because we are in hot weather conditions and we have to have fresh food wherever we stop uh, there's always a bar a medic there is always a support vehicle that is very close to the horses and a support vehicle that's always at the roadhead so that the vehicle close to the horses can get to the roadhead and that vehicle will then transport you in case of any emergency or in case you feel like you don't want to ride anymore and you're tired, then that support vehicle can just release you of your horse. One of us will take the horse for you and you can enjoy a Willys Jeep ride or an old Land Rover Defender. We choose very different areas in terms of our ride itineraries. For instance, my favorite one at the moment that I really would love to execute is to arrive in Khajarao and ride to Joanna and Raghu's um, Sarai at Toria, break for lunch with them, do a boat ride across the Ken, stop at Ken River Lodge whilst the horses are swum across or walked across a weir. They'll get to the camp, you'll get to the camp on the boats. And then from that point on, every day you ride through buffer and scrub jungle which has Central Indian wildlife, up to Kalinjar, the fort. That's like a dream itinerary, which has boats, it has jeeps, it has tigers, it has wildlife and horses to accompany you through that journey. The one we operate regularly is actually from Bhaiswara to Bhavrani, on to Bhadrajun and then on to Chanod. And the reason why this one is regularly operated is because our horses are all scattered around this belt. So it's very easy for us to accumulate our horses for a group, whether it's two or five or ten. It's possible for us to very quickly put that ride together. In this ride, again, it's the same model. There's a lunch spot that's identified a few days before the ride commences for each day. And you'll ride A to B with a lovely little Shamiana tent. But the service provided is still the same. It's the same bar, it's cuisine, the same masseuse, the same medic and the same support vehicles throughout the ride. When we're talking about adventure and action in India is that even through the adventure, the you know, that it is juxtaposed with culture when you're driving through, riding through or rafting through these areas is something that is unmissable. But in the riding itinerary that you've spoken about, these are uh, practically destinations that are not very well known. Lovely stories around uh, each of the forts. So do you include the cultural immersions again become a part of the curation? If you remember, you sent a lovely writer to us 
us called Julie Miller and she yeah. wrote a very nice article for us in the Australian print media and one of the key things that comes across in her article is actually her interaction with the villagers that she seemed to feel that was a unique experience for her who's a travel writer obviously traveled extensively around the world and also a writer and, she's a and season. she's a writer uh, but for her more than the writing i mean she loved the writing but i think more than the writing it's the interaction on horseback with remote rural landscapes when you interact with them from horseback it's a very different experience for one you're much slower you're much less intimidating than having a jeep so the interaction with from the villager to you is a very special time yeah, it's it definitely becomes it's a high intimate, point so that you must there's have, no barrier yeah. you're close yeah. that person approaches you based on the horse whether they feel comfortable getting close to the horse or not but they still want to engage with you and i think that's a you know it's a very very special experience that you must have seen a lot of that in the 23 years that you've been promoting my cousin um, came the same model as sorov does which means that he doesn't own his own horses which is the smart thing to do came had a stable that he could bank on that was his uncle uh, mahendra singh sahib's uh, stable he always had good horses that he mounted his guests on so our kind of roots overlap which means that he uses two of my properties in all his rides so he starts from rohit or the camp now or meergarh now mm-hmm. and he ends up at kumbalgarh he started to do that in two legs but in one of kem's rides uh, there was a group where uh, this lady had an artificial leg and talking about interaction they stop for water and for you know refreshments and of course the crowd collected because it was hot and uncomfortable so she got a little tired of the artificial leg sitting on the horse she just plucked out her leg and threw it in, into the trolley of the jeep <laughs> <laughs> completely shocked all shocked the, the villagers <laughs> So um there've been lots of such incidents now you can laugh looking back but when it happened it was uh, cause for concern because you know it's horses and it always involves some sort of mishap there're not many companies that are doing riding program they're not doing many uh, equestrian programs all these chaps who are doing horse safaris as a as a business for me it's really not a business Yeah. don't keep their own horses you could realize because you can't make money keeping your own horses it's not a yeah. car that you park in the garage but you already established that this is a passion play for you so we yeah, really... absolutely so for <laughs> yes. me it's a passion yeah yeah and i wouldn't have it any other way so yeah. as far as i'm concerned for me the horse comes first i have to ensure the safety of my horse i have to ensure the comfort of my horse the trick in in conducting safaris and rides or offering rides is to match the rider and the horse yeah. that is the key you have to match the right rider to the right horse if there is a mismatch you will have problems yeah. either the horse will suffer or the rider will suffer by coming off it that for us is the most important thing and that's why before my guests get on i have to ask a lot of uh, blunt questions to them so we have to really probe deep and then now my eyes trained enough to to gauge the rider as soon as he gets on within 5 seconds i can come to know how much uh, how deep he is in in water mm-hmm. so then accordingly Hoka, we have to you, pace the do you do you find that because they're schooled on riding thoroughbreds and western horses that you have to instruct them how to change their posture on a marwadi no no it's not the posture the posture is the same whether it's a thoroughbred or the marwadi okay. the posture needs to be correct if it's an incorrect posture you will ruin his back the tack of the horse has to be very good and especially for long rides it has to be very good because animals cannot speak yeah. so yeah. if you are not sensitive to the animal it will you will just make him suffer normally the practice is that one any shortening of stride any sort of stumbling is because of bad saddle if the horse is putting his head up if the horse is get stiffening his lower neck if the if he's pulling if he's rushing he is obviously in pain that means he has a sore back yeah. if he's putting his head up which means that either the rider is not sitting correctly or your saddlery is not quite right so in a fitted saddle with a good rider with the correct posture the horse will be comfortable he'll be able to put his head down and walk with a long stride so that's what you want in a long ride the other areas that we have to be careful of is how to pace the ride in an ideal situation you have all top riders with you so they can go you know you are not worried about somebody coming off and somebody you know having problems with you. 
controlling the animal. How much canter, how much trot, how much walk, and which areas to canter and which areas to trot. We would only canter or gallop if we have to, where we get the right terrain. Otherwise, you're walking. Do you usually so accompany all your uh, rides? Uh, I uh, I did. Now I have uh, my rider who rides with with the guests. But I did for a long time. Yes. I think I I've earned my uh, uh, slightly elevated stay. But I do go out sometimes with you know if, if there is some good riders or if I feel like it, I go. Otherwise, no. We have a good trained staff now. Thirdly, the the guests and their tack. See the saddle. If the saddle is comfortable for the horse, it has to be comfortable for the rider as well. Right. So that is very important. The kind of bit that you use. Now, a lot of the animals that are in the villages, especially Marwadis, they tend to use the the kante wali kajal. jaggered, the jaggered snaffle or the bit. Mm. You can't do that. That's severe. You shouldn't be doing that. I certainly will not allow any bit like that on my safari. So we don't, and you know the horse will have that bit in his mouth for most part of the day. It needs to be comfortable sitting in his mouth. I personally would check every bridle of the horse if it's too tight, if it's too loose. It should be fitting correctly. So only if it is fitting correctly will the animal be comfortable, and yeah. there will be no problem. If it's not fitting correctly, then you will have a horse that will be throwing his head about because he's in pain. He's just protecting. He'll either rush. He'll throw his head about. He will. Do stuff because he's in pain. He's trying to get away from it. It's very technical. It um, seems like an amazing science, really. Oh yeah, it is. It is a science. And then the rider itself. We are of course uh, very careful with our riders. We have a, a backup vehicle which is close to the horses all the time. A rider who rides with the guests is kind of trained, like a paramedic, with a bit of, with a, with a bit of first aid. In our area, help is not far. You know, so. God forbid if there is any sort of mishap, doctors can be easily reached within half an hour, twenty minutes. It's brilliant, Siddharth. It's really, really <laughs> wonderful. I mean, things I, I've I've not known so far, and it was really interesting to learn uh, all these things. Sort of the the best practices that we always talk about, and how can we all be responsible when we are working with animals? I find that because a lot of our riders are Western horse, that we end up giving them is very, very. <laughs> as he said sensitive they're very collected with your feet and your hands any movement any instruction is hyper understood by the animal so i find that to tell the rider to keep his feet out his seat back is slightly less rein contact initially and then slowly collect the horse up is something you drill in the first day to the rider at the same time i think that the ride leader who's actually the most important person unfortunately never gets to see the riders riding so although the ride leader is up ahead finding the way and making the journey it's very important to have a rear rider who's qualified enough to be able to advise all the riders ahead of him throughout the first few hours or the first few sessions of riding so that he can understand which horse is playing which rider is not managing to to understand his animal comfortably because if you don't sort it out in the first one or two sessions the next five sessions that only will get exponentially worse so you need to address it early on so that the ride moves smoothly and once that's done you'll find that the entire ride and the riders will be much happier throughout the journey if you say western riding do you mean western saddle riding you mean you get a lot okay. of american Oh come no, no. Those, those I don't count them as riders I'm sorry okay. I, if they say we've ridden western then I say you don't know it means yeah. you're a novice because they really don't know western yeah. saddles are very forgiving and uh, the kind of riding that they've done is trail riding in america sort of we're talking about best practices uh, you know like siddharth was saying he knows his horses very well it is his stable how does that pan out with you the business model is such that we spend a good part of 6 months of the year uh, before the riding season where a few of us go off to our different small small stables that are scattered around and spend some time with the family and the animal okay. just to assess maybe do a half day ride check if he needs any shoeing or if he if the animal needs any veterinary care that they haven't managed to identify that one of our stable managers or one of our ride leaders can identify that there's a problem much earlier on once that part of the process is done during the year just prior to the ride 
a person will go and collect up the animals it's area specific so if i'm going to ride bijapur to jhalawad which is rocky terrain i will look for horses schooled in that belt so they used to hard ground uneven ground okay. passing water river line system if i'm riding the jhalor uh, like manvender singh ji's landscape then we'll find horses from this belt what about age of horse how early can they start riding how for early? our kind of safari shobha we would say that at least a 2 3 years of riding time that horse should have had which makes the horse about 5 years old but some of our best safari horses are 14 15 year old mare she's a, she's the ultimate she's gentle but she's a very old mare but in your model uh, sort of these horses when they are not riding are they doing other things they might be ridden by the family maybe somebody like when manvinder singh ji was alive Siddharth would have been riding one of the horses in school days. These are from uh, legitimate stables. How do you mean in terms of registration? Yeah, registered can ride. Have the uh, necessary protocols in place. I mean, what are the guidelines for using a horse for riding? The horses are legitimately registered that have been donated to these horse owners. But if you want to call them a legitimate stable in terms of a uh, regular veterinary. Check regular. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Check, uh, you know, like a like a race horse stable is expected to adhere to a certain. Uh, so in rural areas, it's much more liberal system. Okay. There is a vet. We have our own vet as well who comes on try annually. He'll go through all the horses. But there's a local vet who'll come once a week, once a month, whenever there's a call out. Okay. But in terms of actual legitimization of each animal's housing. one cannot mm. say that it is like the same standard as we would like it to be maybe in the yeah. future that is something that this company model can start to fund a project start, where yeah. you could okay. legitimize all these little places by using your funding and using the charity to be able to check regularly what's going on then when yeah. we take the animal from these people we can say it's certified by the brook trust brook yeah you know yeah. So, or something yeah. similar maybe the marwari horse association can take the lead yeah. on that so that what do you think with your own stable i think uh, you probably are will be on the pulse of these things Yeah. we only start our horses start with very basic training saddle and eventually rider uh, not before 3 and 1/2 years after he's 3 and 1/2 years old we probably have a rider on him and by the time he's ready for guests it's again guests to horses mm-hmm. if i get a top level rider i'd be happy to give him my horse but the regular riders that come to the hotel i have my riding you know guest horses and these are again marwaris what about how long would you allow your horses to be ridden i mean what age depending on their fitness i've had uh, horses that have been in riding 16 17 years no problem to promote riding as a definitive adventure experience in india what are the three top things you think we should be doing how can we get the word out one for me personally i don't know whether sort of is using other breeds or thoroughbreds as well for his safaris or you're only using marwaris but for me it is the marwari and that's my usp so for me it's not just the horse it's riding the marwari that is the experience that i would like to reach to the world with and that's a special experience and that in turn also promotes the breed secondly we have to satisfy the equestrian world i mean wherever equestrian sport is big the few fundamental things that they're looking for is one safety measures two the condition of horses very very important and the quality of horses very important three the tack that you use that is the saddlery that you use you need to spell this out when you're reaching out to a client or an audience promoting your horse safaris these are foundation number four comes the experience that you that you provide so for me it is fantastic if sarov is going to or will be in the future doing rides in madhya pradesh i would love to do it but for me geographical distances transporting my horses there the horses are too precious for me to take them anywhere out of uh, my sight and out of uh, my control that's why i restrict my riding to my area just your yeah sarov what should we be doing out there to put the the idea that india is a great equestrian destination the marwari horses are fabulous riding horses and the terrain that they will be passing through can really bring culture into your riding and you know create create 
very very interesting experiences i think two things uh, come to mind straight away which are the core fundamentals for our business model at bijapur safari one is not to have a low cost product but to have a product that is full of how the capital is utilized it is well utilized money but it is utilized to the fullest possible i think that first thing is very important that we don't try and do the low cost version of a high end exclusive concept secondly i believe really that yes we have many indigenous breeds in india but we must be able to promote as that when i saying the marwadi horse which is an umbrella for the hot blooded curled ear war horse that we all know and love to ride we i think like the tiger is to wildlife, wildlife. the marwari horse is to our product the, for the, the equestrian yeah the equestrian yeah. programs i and think that's a I, fantastic point picador will be releasing a book by a friend of mine called yashaswini chandra about marwari horses and their history in the coming year okay. so i think you know things like book launches things like the short film i made should be made into events that we can really promote the horse culture there's art history there's textile history there's craftsmanship that are all involved around the animal there's jewelry for horses of course there's saddlery then there's history paintings miniatures there's so much we somehow should bring that to the world and say it's not just about riding though you can come to manvinder singh ji or you can come to ajit boni dunlo and you can see murals of horses you can see saddlery you can see jewelry so even if you are not a rider there is still a great horse experience to be had i think it's important to create that that story uh, around the story around the marwari yeah, yeah absolutely that's that's great. what we try and do talking about the horse jewelry and everything it's many reasons to come we can easily promote india as a destination there's a whole new world opening up for travel and opportunity so what horse yeah. photography photography yeah. tours and horse photography tours even if you're not a group that's riding but you want to experience that. the culture of horses getting, you must be able to see jewelry dance art miniatures folklore music around, yeah. you know around horses. and you can do a whole tour uh, um, based on yeah. that and the, you, so you're not selling riding you're selling the culture and concentrate on the marwari horses i think that's absolutely brilliant thank you very much siddhar thank you so I much just, sort of i hope uh, when I we collate this if we all the high points that you all have spoken about we can really put it out effectively it was fantastic and a fascinating conversation today and like i said there are several reasons to come to india look at equestrian programs look at the marwari horses look at the Rom- romance of the culture and the terrains that you can ride through on uh, marwari horses as another reason to be coming here on world tourism day here's calling out to all you travelers explore differently